So you may be wondering why it is I do the same thing every morning. I, I don't know. I feel like most people kind of have their morning routine, but for me, I wake up and I immediately make my bed. I come out, I do a little five to 10 minute, like Pilates type routine, sometimes with weights. Not enough to get myself worked up into a sweat or get my heart rate up or anything. It's just to kind of get my body moving. And then I do my skincare routine. And then I have my athletic greens and my coffee, drink some water, and I'm ready to go. That just is kind of my everyday morning routine. I'm not a morning person either, so I have to have a routine that I just kind of default into because just complex decision making is not a strong point for me first thing in the morning, so. But speaking of coffee, you were not lying when you said that that uh, Stump Town was the coffee to get. I've rather been enjoying it. I already forgot the name of the blend that I got, but it is delicious. So I'm gonna go make a big old mug of that. Yeah, Holler Mountain, it is gooder. I just ordered some more Four Sigmatic coffee too. I haven't had that in a while. All right, I'm over here in Target. I ran in here to get, oh, I already forgot. Isn't that always the case with Target? Uh, actually, I just filmed a skincare video for you guys. Um, but there was something also I wanted to get. Anyways, I'm distracted. Store and go disposable containers. Those are kind of cute. Bougie food wrap. It's cute. Beeswax food wrappers. Yeah, I don't know. It's it looks like it's gonna rain, but it feels hot. I think because they had the heater on in there. Yeah, I'm always surprised when I go into Target. I mean, I've become desensitized to this, but it's like every time I go in there, there's like a ton of new skincare brands, not even just like brands that have launched new products or a new line, but like new brands. And it's, the, it's competitive for anybody in skincare. I just, I don't know. I feel like so much stuff is just being repeated over and over again. There's not anything really innovative coming out. Yeah, with all the talk of like the shortages and everything, there seems to be no shortage of skincare being launched. Comment below, how is it where you guys are? Are you finding that things are slim pickings or is it back up to you? usual inventory i know prices of stuff have gone up but you know what it's gotten expensive or i've just noticed the price of for whatever reason is almond milk um that's gotten really pricey i go through quite a bit of almond milk so i've noticed that is expensive but i know the price of meat has really skyrocketed I'm here in Costco, this wet brush, detangling brush. You know, when it comes to brushing the hair, if it's wet, it's more prone to breakage and damage when it's wet. Unless you have textured hair and you need to detangle your hair while it's wet, I would suggest not brushing your hair when it's wet. US and their flavored lip balms. Oh my goodness. You guys know the drill with these. The flavorants, they end up causing irritation of the lips. Dries out the, dries out your lips. Makes you want to keep using it. <laughs> it's a vicious cycle. And then we have SK2 back again for $199.99. This is the Ferment with their trademark Patera, which for all intents and purposes could just be mostly water. <laughs> Yeah, I would call it a dupe, but in my opinion, it's simply just a better product. It is the Misha treat, uh, Time Revolution First Treatment Essence. I happen to think it's better than this. I tried this a long time ago, and I was underwhelmed. I actually kind of found it a little irritating, whereas the Misha one um, definitely helps with improving hydration and kind of smoothing out skin texture. 
I know these cocoa bombs are like a trend, or at least they were over the holidays, but aren't these adorable with the little faces? Little bear. Baby, she's a firework. Hey guys, I am back. I'm doing my iris store. I haven't talked about this in a while, but I do still use it. I use it at least a couple of times a week. Ideally, you use it every other day. And I used to use it every other day, but sometimes I just kind of fall out of the habit of it. But I've been getting some questions from you guys about it. Yes, I do still use it. And I definitely have appreciated a narrowing of my central part. You know, I don't really have pattern hair loss, which is what this is for. But since using it, I definitely have appreciated an improvement in hair thickness and hair density and a lot less shedding overall. So I keep using it, you know, I think it's it's been very helpful for me. Yeah, it's just 25 minutes. And this particular helmet, I get questions about how this compares to others on the market. Like there's the laser cap, the comb, and they're all kind of the same principle, but this one I prefer, A, because of the shape. It really covers uh, you know, a good surface area, pretty good coverage, which I like. And it's just like really comfortable to wear. I don't, you know, the ones that you have to like manually reposition around, I just find that super awkward. I like that I can just put this on and you know, do my work at my computer. It's lightweight, it's comfortable. Um, I do get questions like, can you use this with Rogaine? You certainly can. In fact, for people who have got like less than ideal results with Rogaine, it, studies show that they get you know additional benefit with the laser, uh, with, with at-home low-level laser therapy. Uh, as opposed to just minoxidil alone. So it, they definitely can be used together. Um, but some people, you know, they fail minoxidil probably because you actually, the minoxidil, in order for it to work, it has to be converted to its active form. There's an enzyme in the hair follicle that does that. And maybe some people just don't have good levels of that enzyme, it's thought. But uh, the helmet, you know, the at-home low-level laser therapy, it definitely is an option for people who fail minoxidil or who just find it too irritating. Um, so this is just another option. Plus this is convenient, you can do it at home. So yeah, I keep, I keep using it. My hair grows really fast though. Speaking of which, I need to cut it. But I was just planning out a video for you guys on combination sunscreen, so stay tuned for that. I don't know when it'll go up. But I wanted to give a shout out to this product. I've mentioned it on here before. If you were looking for a moisturizer that's inexpensive, that has sunscreen in it, don't sleep on this. I've been using this for years, like since I was in college. It is a combination or hybrid sunscreen, meaning it has zinc in it as well as some chemical filters. And it leaves a little bit of a cast. The cast is somewhere in between an all chemical sunscreen and an all mineral sunscreen. So it ends up working out okay for people with like medium skin tones. If you have a very deep skin tone, you are gonna get a white cast with this. But the consistency of this, it spreads on the skin really well. It doesn't like pill or clump. Um, easy to tolerate around the eyes. And it's actually pretty moisturizing too. Well, hey guys, I just got out of the shower. I did my skincare routine. I finished editing a video for you guys on topical melatonin as an anti-aging ingredient. Uh, you know, it shows great promise because of its ability to fight off those free radicals that occur upon exposure to environmental stressors. And those, you know, they damage DNA and our skin cells proteins in our skin, like, you know, they damage collagen, lead to upregulation of enzymes that chew up collagen, damage elastic tissue, etc. cetera. Um, and melatonin as a topical antioxidant, it, ha it shows good penetration, not only into the like epidermis, but also all the way down into the dermis where the actual collagen is, as well as within the hair follicle, the pore. But not only does melatonin directly uh, fight off oxidative stress by mopping up those free radicals, but it indirectly does so because it leads to an increase in the enzymes that are already present in your skin that likewise fight off that oxidative stress. So, you know, you kind of get a two for, and it is sustained, um, you know, a sustained benefit. 
which is you know really helpful for barrier recovery, healing, healing damaged collagen and recovery and repair of damaged collagen in the deeper layers of the skin. So it's a really compelling ingredient. Now you may wonder, well, what about just taking a melatonin supplement? Melatonin taken orally, it will not localize to the skin to you know that appreciable of an amount as it as it would applying topically i mean it doesn't you know you just kind of maybe assume that taking something internally it's going to accumulate to a higher level in your skin but it's off in many cases you know it's the opposite um applying it to the skin if, if, if it actually penetrates well and can accumulate as melatonin can well then you actually get better levels in the skin there's no evidence that applying melatonin to the skin has any adverse effects on like your circadian rhythm your sleep cycle it doesn't cause any like cognitive problems but taking a melatonin supplement especially you know supplements on the market they're not regulated a lot of them have really high amounts of melatonin now if you take one to help with getting your sleep cycle back on track like if you've been traveling you've got jet lag or if you work night shifts and you're not having a normal sleep wake rhythm then it's definitely helpful for sure but to just take one like i see people promoting um, sleep supplements like you could just take one every night and that is actually not really good if you you know in the absence of some kind of a you know circadian rhythm issue or in certain medical conditions melatonin supplements may be helpful but for an otherwise healthy person who's just gotten their sleep you know ha is having trouble sleeping definitely start with the sleep hygiene things turn off your devices at least an hour before going to bed and sleep in a cool dark pitch black room and then when you wake up in the morning make sure that your eyes see sunlight First thing in the morning it will help wake your brain up naturally i actually i actually go first thing in the morning i go to the window and open the curtains and let my eyes see a visible light and that is important for kickstarting your day night routine and that way you know towards the end of the day you want things to be dark no you know screens or anything so that that melatonin from your pineal gland in your brain can release an increase in your blood and help you fall asleep and it's important not only for just like sleeping and recovery, but melatonin plays a key role in like your immune responses to things, reproduction, body weight management. Yeah, prioritizing your sleep and good sleep hygiene habits. I mean, it's, you know, it's one of those things people don't realize how critical it is. It's kind of like, you know, the importance of eating healthy and exercising on a regular basis. Um, preventatively some people you know they don't appreciate that delayed gratification piece of it and when it comes to your sleep getting it on track you know it's not going to be a quick fix it's something that you're going to have to to really work on no alcohol before bed you know alcohol it'll make you feel sleepy but it doesn't it gets in the way of proper REM sleep and you actually wake up prematurely you don't get good restorative sleep if you use alcohol. Same thing with sleep aids, actually. They don't, a lot of them don't actually help you get true restorative sleep. They just kind of sedate you and make you groggy. Um, and that's not what you want. Um, so yeah, all that to say, optimize your sleep. It's really important for your health, for sure. For staying healthy, not getting sick, not getting run down, and not getting chronic diseases. I mean, it's something that people have just been um, kind of misled into believing is something you can sacrifice, especially in like a lot of, you know, corporate culture or whatever, where it's like grind, 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 grind. And people, trust me, I know, I mean, hello, and the medical profession is this way. A lot of times you'll find these people who are just like, you know, touting how little sleep they can get. And it's almost like a competition, especially amongst competitive people. And in reality, it should be the opposite. People should be like, I got eight hours last night. <sighs> Um, because you know it's it's that important I mean you wouldn't see people in the medical field bragging like that they went out and smoked a pack of cigarettes and I'm not equating a night of poor sleep to smoking a pack of cigarettes but it's a behavior that is not good for your health long term for sure sacrificing your sleep um, and it impairs cognition which you know for physicians it should be you know you've got to be sharp <laughs> And if you don't sleep well, you don't have good executive function, decision making, and not to mention your mood goes down the tank. 
Anyways, you guys, I hope you're having a great weekend, and thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.